Another way of capturing design intent in Autodesk Inventor is by using model parameters. Model parameters are similar to user parameters, except that when you create them, you create them during the sketching process. This video will demonstrate how to use model parameters in Autodesk Inventor. Welcome back to Practical AutoCAD and Inventor, your source for practical solutions to your problems with AutoCAD and Autodesk Inventor. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe so you will be notified whenever new videos are published. Also, if you have any questions you would like me to answer, please leave a comment below. Now, on with the video. The only significant difference between a user parameter and model parameter is when you create them. While user parameters can be made any time, model parameters are created while you're dimensioning in the sketch phase of your part design. So we're going to demonstrate how to create model parameters in this video. We're going to start off by creating the sketch for this, uh, this pencil, if you will, um, into a drawing. You'll see that it is a revolved feature, so I'm going to be using a linear diameter. I'm going to be projecting an axis as a center line, and I'm going to apply three model parameters to this drawing. Going to Inventor, we look at it here. I'm going to start a new sketch, and I'll simply start on that front plane. Because it's going to be a revolved feature, I will want to first project that x-axis as a center line. So again, on the format menu, we'll go to the center line tool. I'm going to say project my geometry and I'm going to expand the origin and pick that x-axis so that it's displayed as a center line. Once I've got that in place, I can turn off the center line function and I can simply draw my lines. I'll start at my center point draw my first line at whatever angle I think it needs to be. Again, it doesn't matter for this. I'm just going to draw it here like this and then straight out and then I will make a constraint there. Now it looks to me as if I forgot. I didn't get this quite horizontal. I do want that to be horizontal so I'll add that constraint and I'm going to add the constraint between the center of that and that as well. And so now I'm ready to add my dimensions. So when we talked about user constraints, you would go to the Manage tab, pick parameters, pick user parameters, and create one here. If you want to create model constraints, you can simply do it as you are sketching. So if I go to my Sketch tab here, I can add my dimension. And for example, <clears throat> if we look at our image here, I need one called length, which is going to go from the point of the pencil to the center of the circle on this end. So instead of creating it as a user parameter, I'll simply pick my start point, pick my second point, and when I put it down, instead of just typing in the value that I want, I will put in the name length equals and then whatever number I want it to be. Notice that it all turns black in the dimension box there. When I choose OK, it puts that dimension in. But if I go back and I look at the parameters box, now under model parameters, it gave it the name, the name length instead of D0. Okay. So again, if I want to do that again, I can do the same thing for the angle. So back on the sketch tab, I'll say I want a dimension between that point or that line and that line. Pardon me, I need to make sure I get the line there. Okay. Click. You'll type in the name that you want it to have, angle, equals, and then whatever number that has to be. And then finally, if I want my diameter, again, using linear diameters, you pick the line you pick the center line, it automatically gives you that linear diameter option. And now I can say the diameter is equal to whatever the number is going to be. So these are now model parameters, again, that are shown as model parameters, but they work just like linear or just like user parameters. 
At this point, my drawing is fully constrained. I can finish my sketch, and now I can revolve it.